Okay. Good morning, men. This is uh, promise number five. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, who'd like to start us out in prayer right off the get-go? I will. Okay. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be with with our brothers here this morning and we thank you for your holy spirit that's going to come into this message lord and this meeting and to just anoint us with the things that you want us to hear father we uh we rebuke any anxieties we rebuke any anything that is not of you that may try to hinder us this morning from receiving your word lord we love you so much and we thank you for providing everything you do for us we thank you for these men that are on this call this morning. And Lord, we thank you for those who will watch this recording later, that they could be touched by the Holy Spirit, just as we are going to be touched, Father. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to serve you. And Lord, we just ask now that you go with us through this and uh, just bless us all, Father. Bless us all abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Carl. Yes, sir. Um, so promise five is according to the PDF, it says change maker, but we know it as serving. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> so with this, it says a promise keeper understands that Jesus calls him to be his hands and feet, serve others with integrity. His purpose is purposely lifts up the leadership of the church and his nation in prayer. And then I'm seeing, uh, 1 Timothy 5.17, it says the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are, wor are worthy of double honor, especially, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. So with that, they're always serving us, and so we're always serving the others too, as leaders as we are. Yes. Um, So now I'm really trying to figure out which way to run with this. <laughs> I got a couple of different notes. You just take it and run, brother. We're here. Right. <laughs> you pick one of them and we'll go with you. Either one. I'm going to try to mix it all up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is faith visible? Is faith visible? Hmm. <laughs> I'm making my mind work too hard this morning. <laughs> um, it's funny you should ask that question because I have that question down myself. Is faith visible? Uh, I think the I think the result of someone's faith can be visible. Yeah, I was going to say our fruit. I mean, you can see that you can see them, but I don't know about the faith itself. It's kind of like the wind. You can't see it. You know, it's working. But yeah. I'm going to say no, it's not visible. <laughs> Come on, Bill, throw something in there, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, just to disagree. There you go. <laughs> I say yes. Faith, faith is visible. Uh, and, I, and I did that just for that purpose. Ah. Faith, right? Faith is visible in the fact that um, you guys know one of my pet phrases, let the Jesus in you see the Jesus in me. If we are faithful in doing our calling the way we should as being a good disciple, which is a good server and a good learner uh, to our fellow man, then it is definitely visible in our actions. Well, the first thing that just came to mind was you show me faith by works and I'll show you works by faith. Yes, I don't rem remember what verse that is, but I that just shoved right out at me right away. So <clears throat> my so my book, yeah, faith is visible. And that's, you know, that's one of the points of contention against some of the different denominations is you don't have to do anything other than confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that he died on the cross for you. And um, then you're good to go. Okay, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes, and the evidence of things not seen. 
Right. The evidence of things not seen. Yeah. So is that saying we can't see faith? Is that the interpretation that I get out of that um, is because we know that when we wake up and when we go to sleep and all during our day, we're in a spiritual battle. And those are things that are unseen. And so faith is the evidence of the things unseen. We believe that we have mighty warrior angels fighting for us. We can see the evidence of it in our life when things are being answered for us as we live appropriately. I'm okay. tired. <laughs> this, is, this is deep. I'm tired already. I know, right? <laughs> well, you know, it, it also says faith without works is dead. And that was where I was going with this. There's a, you know, that's some contention in between some of the dom denominations is because some say all you need to be is saved and, and, and you're done. You know, everything's good. Uh, but others, uh, say that your works get you in and um you have to have secret handshakes and wear funny underwear and things like that <laughs> uh, i i say that um you've been to my church <laughs> <laughs> i've been to a lot of them <laughs> I, I say that it is um that as uh, brother tom read there that your faith uh, is will produce works if you have the faith and you're following the gospel plan, you're going to work regardless. You're going to, you're not going to be able to help, but do something. Well, I know it says in there, I, I mean, you can, you ask Jesus into your heart, you're saved, yes. but it also says that there's different levels in the kingdom. I mean, you got to, there's going to be, you know, the, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I don't mm -hmm. know the verse, but. Well, on, on that note right there, you know, when you said we're saved, yes, uh, I agree with you saved. The question here, though, is about faith being visible or, you know, can we have faith and works? Okay. Um, I, I believe that a person can be saved and that they maybe don't work like they should. I mean, all of us are going to fall short of the glory of God. It tells us that in the scriptures. Right. So, some are going to fall worse than others. <laughs> look, at, look at David. He had faith in God. He had a Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, David. Other David. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he was an adulterous man and he was a murderer. And, but he yeah. turned his heart. His heart was for the Lord. So um, you, you can't have faith and not do some works, right. I believe. And, but that still doesn't really have anything to do with your salvation. It's kind of a separate, separate little list there. Well, our faith should be ever increasing. I mean, it, it should be building as we're growing. Uh, you know. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so now the next one I'm thinking of, or the next question I came up with, because I w went through some of the videos today, it says, how dependent are we of ourselves or of God? <laughs> you went real deep this morning. Uh, me personally, I, that, I, can't I, there, man. <laughs> I, I, I can't get up without him. So it's, it's every day is, it's, you know. To roll out of bed is like, okay, Lord, roll me over, get, you know, help my feet get on the floor, you know. Um, I guess that, you know, part of that one is how, how closely are you living to Galatians 2.20, where it tells us that I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. You know, uh, that pet phrase, we say, die to self. <laughs> that's the hard one you, you're right it's getting deep because that that's the one that's hard for most everyone is dying to yourself well watching that video from uh tomorrow davis 
I believe is what it, who he was. I don't want to slaughter his name from the Saints. Mm -hmm. He said on there, he goes, more time, we, more time we cultivate our actions and not our hearts. And I, that one hit. It's like, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. I mean, we'll look at what we want other people to see as opposed to what we truly want to see inside of us. Absolutely. How many times have we how many times have we spent too much money to buy something we really didn't need to impress people that we that really didn't care about us? Well, it's like look look at some of the houses or some of the cars that people have. Right. People are living like some of them are living without uh, not in their means. But I'm not to judge that. I mean, it just that's the way it is. Well, here I got this code. I want to do this. No, that's not the way it should be. But that's the way they do it. Yes. The old, the old phrase they used was "keeping up with the Joneses." I think. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to. Oh man, they they just got a new car. You know, mine's mine's falling apart over here. And you know, I'm we're living paycheck to paycheck, but I need to get something better. Uh, <laughs> Brothers, I'm saying that because I know I used to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, you learn to be content where, where you are. I mean, yeah. took me being in the bed stuck. And, and it's like, okay, <laughs> I can't help it. I can't change it. I, I, well, I couldn't, but he did. Let's see, what is it Paul says in Philippians 4.11? I have learned that whatever state I may be in to be content. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, with much or little. Well, it's like not picking on Carl, but Carl's got a Prius. Now all of a sudden they come out with the Teslas. Not really. We can't just stay <laughs> well enough alone. All right. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do with the Teslas, but I'm not going down that road. <laughs> well, you know, you know, that's uh, in my old days, I'd be absolutely right, man. I want one of those new Tesla S threes with the with the oh my goodness button on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, brothers, I I do the car sitting in the driveway that my wife drives is a IS two fifty F Sport, and it so it used to be the one I drove, and I don't want a car like that anymore. I love my Prius. I'm I'm getting eighty three to ninety miles per gallon electric you know hmm? <laughs> I love i'm it. stuck in my old ford buddy <laughs> <laughs> okay helping helping others is a challenge because <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be a challenge i mean we help out at the church we help out at today this afternoon we're going to be helping the homeless and all why is it a challenge because they can be a pain in the butt. That's right. Well, Jeff. Now I can't, yeah, that's true. Oh. <laughs> Joe's right. I've got my own agenda. I, I don't have time to do something for somebody else. I bought a pickup truck. I had a pickup truck once in my life, and I found out how many friends I really had when I had a <laughs> And then I swore, I swore the next vehicle I got would not be a pickup truck, and it wasn't, and I've never owned another one since. <laughs> what you need to do is get a trailer and put it behind that pickup. Then you got it. <laughs> yeah. Then you got a lot of friends. <laughs> yep. Uh, Especially the moving kind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the challenges that we have in helping others is, is just back to the same thing, dying to self. You know, <laughs> because a lot of times when we want to go help somebody, you're wondering what we're going to get in return. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? I got a new, uh, new twist that to this was guy. The, the old man, yeah. That was. Yeah, I got, I got a new go. twist to it. What's I that? Been driving. I haven't been driving for seven years. <laughs> I, I, don't even, I don't even have a vehicle. That I drive. My wife has one vehicle. She drives me around. I mean, I don't physically, I'm not able to even drive, guys. Right. So helping you feather is a challenge, right? I've never, I've never <laughs> owned a car in my life. Yeah. I know, don't know. I don't know how to different drive. challenges. <laughs> like getting getting to a location, walking. <laughs> That's a challenge, guys. Right. 
Yeah, but you help others in other ways, Bill. You, oh, of you, course. You know, it's, it's not just the that kind of, I mean, there's all kinds of help. There's prayer help. There's lifting up help. There's encourage. I mean, when you're stuck, you do what you can. Amen, brother. And, you know, and, but, you know, you know we look at challenges. You know, the guys look at challenges and you say, well, is this a challenge to really serve other people? It is, but it isn't. Because mm-hmm. I get on prayer calls. I pray for others. I'm an intercessor prayer warrior. I'm on seven different of you know zoom calls and that isn't even part of that's not even totality of what i'm doing but where do you get all that time (laughs) well you see me in this bed don't you (laughs) yeah 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 okay so you know my family is really challenged to have me participate with the family let alone participating and i go to church every week I'm, i'm i'm faithful to my lord and and, but I, I do it by remote and by what I can do by challenging people to look at what, what you can accomplish and then get involved as best you can, as much as you possibly can in the Lord's work. And yeah. that's why you guys are part of my family. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I have to Zoom church a lot. I, I can't go all the time, but I go when I can. And our, our brothers just watch right. You know, our brother Joe over there says he's never had a car, don't know how to drive. But I can tell you right now, he serves me every day when I read that, read his prayer. When I read that prayer list, he reminds me of just how my prayer life should be. And that is one of the greatest testaments to something like that is, you know, pay attention to the people around you and what their needs are, because that's what we're supposed to be praying for. That's how we help others. The number one is by praying for them. Right. Amen. And that's how we serve them straight out. Okay. I mean, we look, we take the notes of that around us, whether it's right. in our house or outside, we take those notes and we use it to help better them, not better us. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll, I'll say if um, back to doing something for somebody physically, if somebody asks me in you know, in a couple of weeks, can you help me do this and this? It's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll do it. But then if somebody comes to me, can you help me tomorrow or Saturday? Or today is Saturday. But can you help me tomorrow and doing this and doing that? Then that's a real stickler. It's like my agenda. Right. You know, I want to, how can I better myself to be, more open, give my agenda away and say, okay, I'll, I'll. I guess I've done things like that where I put other stuff away and the rewards that you get are not uh, uh, monetary or anything like that. It's just, I feel good when I do that. There you I go. Put, put all my stuff away and uh, help somebody else out. I don't know why that's not too person. often though. <laughs> I don't know why this verse came to me after you said that, but it's like when Jesus popped up and said, well, come follow me. And the one guy pops up and says, well, let me go bury my dead. And they're like, well, let the dead bury their own dead and that type of thing. So I mean, that's just right there, just threw right in my head instantly. Yeah. 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 He didn't, he didn't say go take care of all your business and come follow me. He said, come follow me. You're right for the time. Well, I think it's your personal stuff. You got to lay down. I mean, if you're doing things, to further his kingdom or to help another Christian or another brother, you can't just drop them to run somewhere else. I mean, you have to kind of put it in some kind of order, I would believe, I would think. Right. At least for me. You know, these are <laughs> you, you hit it on the nail there when you said we were going deep this morning because these are deep subjects, you know, because uh, the first service that we have is to our God and oh. the next service would be to our spouse if we're married and then our family uh and then others so it's okay to serve it's wonderful to serve as long as your service isn't taking away from needs that your you know your own spiritual and emotional and physical needs of your family let's say um because people get wrapped up in service (laughs) Um, (laughs) right 
I've, I got to go do this. I got to do this. I'm, I got this Zoom call. I got that Zoom call. I got to, you know, and then, okay, so where's your wife or where are your kids and when, when all that's going on? So, yeah, it's, it's a balancing act, you know. Um, my neighbor needs me to help him move something. Okay, uh, I would I really want to try to do that, right? You know, like a lot of these questions I have that, that pertains to the church, the building. And it's like I'm looking at it going, really, I can't go according to what this is telling me. Because it's saying, like, um, do you attend church or have a membership in a local church? Why or why not? And I'm like, okay, do I go to the physical building? Yes. Do I have membership? Yes. But at the same token, I need to be the church. Amen. To turn around, bring those around me into his word. Amen. I always go back to Jesus and, and the disciples, man. Where did he do the most intimate teaching and the closeness? It was around a fire with the 12, you know. It, he taught oh. everywhere else, but his most intimate was that one, like, like, our group here, the one-on-one, -on -one, the time taking us really deep this morning, you know, it's to me. The Beatitudes were given on the side of a hill, man. Yeah. Uh, and then it says, how have you invested your time and talents to support the purpose of the church? Well, like Bill, he does it with his call, his prayers. So does wow. Joe. So does uh, David. You know, they use their talents for to, to better others, to help bring others up and speak the word of the God, word to them. Absolutely. Uh, okay, and the other one goes, what resources, what, yeah, resources of yours, financials, fin yeah, finances, skills, and willingness to yeah, willingness to serve, have, or share or contribute, in the context of the church. Are you holding back or making a com committed investment? I think some in the church would say I'm holding back, but others would say we're not. I mean, there again, it's it's what you have. You use what you have. I mean. If you don't have something or if you physically can't do something, you can't do it. I mean, without God giving you this grace, you're I'm stuck. I mean, literally, I mean, I, I for years I couldn't move. And it's only by him that I'm able to move as I do. So I I'm I'm kind of torn on that one. Well, I think when we have physical disabilities that hinder us from being able to do certain things like that, uh, then that is when we turn to intercessory prayer. Um, and, you know, there's there's just so many ways that we can still right. be hands and feet for people, right? Um, I mean, I, okay, how many of you guys have seen, I, I wish I knew the gentleman's name, um, severe birth defects. He has very small he walks around like on the nubs of his little nick you know, vilsovich i can't say yeah. his last name very well but right. it's nick vilsovich or yes yeah. that's, that's he, was at, he was at stadium yeah. event yes he basically has no arms and feet to be the arms right. and feet of jesus but he is such a powerful speaker he is such a power has the holy spirit flowing through him and, and you know joe you, you may not can drive and get out and go anywhere, but I can feel the spirit rolling through you and, and Bill, you, you're there with, you know, you're stuck in that place there, but man, I can just feel him, his presence flowing out of you guys. Um, so it's, it's those we come in contact with and, and, and how that's serving other people is not always picking up a desk and moving it over to another room or putting it on the back of a truck or, you know, doing things like that. There's so many ways to serve people. Well, yeah, especially like right now, it's going to be more enticing or not more enticed, but more open now because we got Thanksgiving coming up, Christmas coming up. And that's really where they really want people to focus or serve. It, right. Those are the times that people really need our help or need yeah. other people's help. 
even if it's a hot meal, um, a, sweat, a sweater or something, it's something that you can do or just to put your arm around them and, you know, pray with them. <laughs> Amen. I mean, mm -hmm. we're getting to be that time of year where that's where we need to actually really focus. You know, there's a, there's a brother on here this morning that prayed for me this week and I haven't even responded to it yet, but uh, <laughs> I've read it four five, six times. And it's just so absolutely amazingly wonderful to know that there are people out there that really don't even know us other than being able to see us face to face on a Zoom call like this or interact with us on these things that actually says a heart, heartfelt prayer for us, you know, and David, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's, it's, on, it's on my heart, brother. I mean, More than you'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me crap. <laughs> we used to we used to come together as leaders when we had Royal Rangers when I was able to move real well. And my prayer was always for unity. And when we got tore down and, and beat up so bad, then I got hurt and it's like I fell away. And we need this fellowship. We need we were designed to be together. Yes. Um, Amen. <laughs> some of us more than others. So yeah, some of us need brothers, <clears throat> believe me. Um, and I'm one of those people. Each and every, <laughs> each and every one of you guys on here that I've been interacting with uh, has done so much more for me than my brother, and 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 I and you just have no idea how grateful I am for this app, for you guys, and for what the Lord's doing through it. Some of you may. <laughs> um, I know with Carl, this is true. It says, okay, are, are there a group of men in your church who pray for and looking for, always, looking for ways to honor your pastor and a pastor's family? What are some of the ways that might, you might accomplish this? I mean, you, you, can pray, you have to pray for them. You can lift them up. I mean, some of the people want you to be more than you can be. And um, you don't understand it until you walk. You can't, you, you can't until you walk in somebody else's shoes. I used to say, oh, well, that he could do this or he could do that. But you know what? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just can't. And that's when you have to give it to God and say, okay, Lord, you lead me where? I can be the most for you, not me anymore, <laughs> you know. Um, anyway. Yeah, I, I know you said, Tom, it's something that I do, and, and, and in some ways that's true, but, you know, I, I know kind of some of the outline that you have here, and it's like, um, I don't, I don't want to steal any of your thunder, Brother Tom, but were you going to look at the five ways to honor your pastor? That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. Okay, so, so number one on there, uh, initiate a relationship without an agenda with your pastor. Um, the church I go to, it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, I go to what they consider a mega church, but, I, but, um, but it doesn't feel like a mega church. It really doesn't. It, it feels like a bunch of hometown little churches, and, and I, I say praise God to that. But initiating a relationship with our lead pastor is very difficult because he's a very busy man. I mean, this guy goes all over the state of California trying to fight for the, the good rights, you know, um, not let them do stupid things, try to keep them from, uh, try to block some of these stupid bills that they have going through. Um, and he's serving the community. We have a, a huge facility called City Link that serves the homeless and feeds needy people. Um, so getting a, a relationship with him is kind of difficult, but he has a wonderful pastoral staff and, the, and that's where you get those relationships. And one of his, um, staff members is pastor Manny, who leads our clean waters purity group, men's purity group. And so, yeah, initiate a relationship with somebody, whoever you can in your church, um, to, to lift them up because they have a huge burden on them. Huge burden. Amen. 
And it was not just the pastors, it was also the leaders too. Yes. Right. Because there's a lot I think of people. Carl was saying part of the leaders. Because there's a lot of people behind the scenes that we don't see or we don't know that are right there behind the pastors to help guide them and lift them up. And if we can get to know them one on one with no agenda at all, just to get to know them personally, yep. then it kind of helps to understand what they go through in their life. So no, you didn't steal my thunder, Carl. You just knew what I was thinking. I, yeah, I mean, that's the way the Holy Spirit works is, is we would be on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that the pastor of our church does know and recognize me because he occasionally visits our clean waters class and we interact with him on that level. Um, but, you know, especially if you're in a smaller church, I used to be a member of a small church. Um, I knew my pastor really well. Um, went to school with his kids. Um, but most of the time when we, most of the time, it's just like with God, really. Most of the time when we really want to go talk to him, it's because we got something on our mind. We got, we got something we need to get off our chest or, or we got something we need to help with, right? Mm-hmm. And that's basically what this says. Have a relationship without the agenda, right? Well, that's just it. I mean, so you invite people to come in that you don't know in your place, your house. And you have community with them. You know, you break bread. You have fellowship with them. You get to know them more personally, more one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what we should be. Mm -hmm. That's that's another reason why I think, you know, I know some of you guys are talking to each other in the background and on private chats and things like that. And that's that's where we do build these relationships. Jonathan, and I have a call once a week, Jonathan Smith, and um, he is my wingman. You know, we've been watching this <laughs> carried carried stuff as well. Uh, Jonathan is my wingman. He's the one that will throw me out of the boat if I don't have enough faith to get out and walk. <laughs> uh, right. and i know i know brother tim over there he's heard had that said yeah and tom tom you you've been thrown out of the boat here a couple of times and and you're walking just fine brother um but we need <laughs> we need those men in our life so that will well we need to live worthy of it but we need we need people some of us need people who will trust us again and, and a lot of times you're not going to get trust in your own, your, in your own domain, right? Um, it's, it takes a long time to build it up once it's broken. But that's what we do is we reach out and we initiate these conversations to strengthen each other. No. It's just like one the other one of the other points you we was talking about with the uh, five on yeah five ways to honor the pastor. It talked about being a church man, not a spectator. You know, help them out in the community, and that's what, kind of what I was talking about earlier. You know, because with Thanksgiving, Christmas, that type of thing coming up, the cold weather coming up, that's just really what I'm really thinking about so much right now. <laughs> Here's something that my wife brought out to me the other night. That's, that's one reason I wanted to, you know, just uh, kind of publicly thank David for his prayers there. Um, we're getting ready. Um, our new leader or the next leader for our Crossroads Adventure has already been identified. And I got a call the other night uh, from him because he's starting to get ready for the March Crossroads and getting his staff together, getting the, the core team together. And he called and was asking me if I would, uh, serve in a position and I said yes and you know the basically he told me to think about it a couple of days and then get back in touch with him and I got off the phone and um, then the next night my wife says you know she's like I've noticed something about you is when somebody calls from crossroads or something like that and it's always like yes and no and okay and yeah I'd be glad to and then you hang up she's like why don't you ever ask anybody how they're doing or why don't you um, ask them if there's anything they need you to pray for. My, my wife is an evangelist like you wouldn't believe. And, and that's a problem area that I've had. And I'm trying to, to use her 
knowledge and wisdom to, to, to answer when somebody says a prayer for me on, on PK, uh, <laughs> you know, to reach out a little more. That's one thing I have a hard time with sometimes is reaching out. And uh, so, yeah, it is, um, this is, makes it easier. Right, Tom? It makes it easier yeah. when, we, when we can get together and know each other. See, that I used be, to reach out. That's, that's being a church man and not just a spectator. <laughs> See, I used to reach out to all my pastors on, what was it, Tuesday or Wednesday, I sent them a text message. Hey, how can I pray for you? What's coming up this week or what's going on with you? And I've got away from it. Mm -hmm. Um it pretty much almost, to me, maybe I was being selfish. I was thinking it was one way. I was the only one doing it and they weren't doing it in return. Mm -hmm. And I can't be that way. So yeah, that's where can't. it convicted me. It's like, yeah, because we're supposed to give without expecting. I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off, brother, but <laughs> it doesn't matter whether they do or not. It's, if the Lord's leading us to do something or if it's in our heart, we need to do it because my wife's got a good friend that she works with at the hospital and she kept feeling she should call this for her. And she's like, no, I think it's just me. Well, come to find out the lady's heat had went out and her lights weren't working and I could fix them. I could go over there and walk my brother through and we could do it, you know, but she had gone for a week without heat and then the lights weren't working. And it's like the Holy spirit had been prompting her to call her, but she didn't do it. We, if God leans something on your heart, man, you, you, you got to do it. Um, you need to, I don't, I'm going to say you got to, cause some people won't, but we should. Absolutely. That was a rabbit well, hole. I'm sorry, but you know, no, you're fine. Cause actually when he prompts you, you're supposed to be obedient. You're supposed to listen to that prompting and do what he tells you to do. She's always afraid that it's just her. And I, I'm kind of the same way after all we went through i'm kind of like you know do i say something do i keep my mouth shut do i open up or do i stop but you know i mean because it pops up and he goes well something about giving him some food you know when i was hungry you fed me when i was cold you warned me i can't remember exactly how it all goes but i mean i know there's different things like that right and that's where always, we, we are guys Asian always people. remember the Lord, the Lord reached out to us first. He communicated with us before we were ever really even able to communicate with him. The Lord always mm -hmm. initiates. And then what we have to do is we have to respond. And, and a lot of times we don't initiate because we forget that we're supposed to. That's what we're, that's what we're tasked to do by the Lord is to initiate our communications. And it's tough. It is tough. And it's not something that comes natural to us, a lot of us guys, because we've never had to do it. We were always, we were always busy with the church. You know, I, when I started with my church, I was a founding father of it. And, and I was, I was an elder for 18 years. I mean, you know, these are things that, and then when you get to a point where you can't communicate in that way by being the person who's always there, who's always there in the church initiating, you have to find a different way to communicate. And that's, that's where I've had to, to learn, you know, that's why I've had to learn to, to, to find a way to communicate. But the Lord always, always reached out for us first. So it's up to us to always reach out to others. However we can, whatever we can do for them. Well, I want to give you another testimony of, of just how, when the Lord lays something on your heart. Um, and this goes back to the prayer that I received from Brother David this week. Uh, we had to talk. He had no idea what's going on around here. Um, but uh, you guys know that in uh, most of you probably know that in, in July, my wife's youngest son passed away from alcoholism. Right. Um, and her oldest son is struggling tremendously with it. And so, David, your prayers in that our faith can, you know, go go beyond anything that's that's in our life right now um i have faith and kept praying and stuff like that and so just as a praise report to let you guys know that her oldest son is today he's in detox good deal praise god he is in detox and when he gets out of detox 
uh, he is probably going to go into our River's Edge Ranch year-long program for his rehabilitation. And so you guys that have known about it and have been praying for me, that's our praise report. He's actually reaching out and getting help. So I thank you, brothers, for that. Lord. Praise God. That's awesome. So yeah, Dave, thanks for the prayer. <laughs> Well, that's where we're supposed to step out of the boat. I mean, if we don't step out of the boat and reach out to those around us, we don't know what they're going through. I mean, you never know. You walk into a, a store, you touch the handles. The next person comes behind you. And I mean, I've, I've heard this a couple different times, but next person comes behind you, they could have cancer or some, some type of illness. Well, if you have the blessings in you and you touch that handle, <clears throat> excuse me, that blessing could go to them and could turn around and take that away from them. But we don't know it until maybe later on, if at all. Right. Faith is the evidence of things unseen, the substance of things hoped for. You're right, Tom. Amen. 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 My first son-in-law <clears throat> is a uh, father to four of my grandchildren but he got caught up in alcoholism and he started running with gangs. He became a gang banger. And, uh, you know, he doesn't hardly ever see his children. Um, my daughter remarried after he divorced her and uh, had three more children by his second, by her second husband. And so we have seven grandchildren, but you know, this, this first, this first son-in-law, has really been on my heart and I've been praying for him for years. And yet, I don't know if we'll ever see the, anything from the, the fruit of that. And yet I know we will because it, he's getting prayed over all the time and he doesn't even know it. Right. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're hoping that the Lord, and the Lord was with him when he was a youngster. He, when he was a young man, a teenager, he used to go to, to Central America. On, on mission trips with his church and went to South America on a mission trip. And so I know he was with the Lord at one time, but boy, I'll tell you, Satan can get a hold of you guys and can really throw you for a loop. And uh, that's what's happened to him. And so, but we, we just keep, I, I just keep on praying for him because I know that that's the best thing I can do for him at this point. And hope, hope that I'm praying you know, the praying, the intercessor prayer will, will help him get back to God. And that's where we have to trust in the fact that it tells us in the book of Malachi that the hearts of the children will return to the hearts of the fathers. Amen. If we do our best not to be, as Tony Evans described this, a messed up man and try to get our life together and, and do the things we're supposed to do as patriarchs in our home. It doesn't mean our children aren't going to go astray. No. You, you can you can do the best you can do, and and they still can turn away from you. Um, um, I still have a prodigal out there, my daughter, who I pray for and have lifted up to God every day. Um, I can't change her. All I can do is keep loving her as her father, and so. Um, I agree with you. We, we put the prayers up there and if it be God's will in our lifetime, we will see something like this happen, but it may not be in our lifetime. And we have to accept the fact that it may not be something we see here, but we have to have faith in things like this, that the hearts of the children will return to the hearts of the father and say, Lord, I know you got it. I saw what you did with me. I, I've seen what you've done with other people who were in worse shape than me. And Lord, I know you can do that in my daughter. And so I give it up to you, Father. And here we go, right? Uh, I'm just, gonna, I, you know, I'm praising God and hoping I'm going to be going to heaven. I really believe that I have a, a place there. And, and so I'm just going to be looking for her sweet soul to come there when it's her time. I mean, that's Praise what we do. Where I was and the way I ran from the Lord. I mean, I, I literally... <laughs> I was backwards as hard as you could go. But my wife had gotten saved early on and he put 
such a love in the Holy Spirit in her that her and my kids praying for me. I mean, I I, it bro I got broke. It got busted down as far as you could go. But, you know, his grace just. And now here I am. Amen. Tonight like with me, I opened up my house, what, about a week, two weeks ago. My brother-in-law was just released out of prison just recently. He done me wrong. I could keep, you know, I have forgiven him, but I haven't forgotten just like the wife, she knows. The, since he's been out, he has done everything on you know the straight and narrow. He's towing the line. He's living with me. And I keep praying that he will come over. I mean, he, I don't know. He might be there. I don't know. I haven't really reached. My youngest daughter is his biological daughter. So when he dropped, she dropped on him about being a grandpa. She goes, okay, if you want to be in pretty much our lives, the baby's, the grandbaby's life and my life, you need to quit getting yourself in trouble. Yeah. So I keep thinking that between me and that baby, we're going to be the ones that pull it together. I don't know how or why, but I just keep getting it, saying that it's going to happen. It's going to be that way. He, uh, like I said, when he got out of prison, he had a motor, he's got a motorcycle. He's got a car. Uh, he just, he's been going to uh, classes, like AA class or whatever. And yesterday he just went in for a job interview and got his, got a job. So he's doing all this with, within two weeks. Awesome. So now I'm just hoping he continues to go down that straight and narrow like he's supposed to. Okay. And I keep throwing the prayers up there to him. Yeah. So it's one of those things I'm serving and I have to, like I said, forgive but I can't always forget, but it's like, I've got to turn around and remember the father's grace to me. Well, I mean, I look at sometimes I wish I didn't remember stuff I'd done because it's like, I hurt people bad and maybe he's the same way. I mean, y'all, I'm glad God don't remember stuff I remember. Amen. Amen to that. Brother, I have to live on that promise myself. I, I can see it in your eyes right now. <laughs> um, yeah, you're absolutely right. By the grace of God, <clears throat> some of us are where we are. Um, we have to use what we have been through to help other men. God uses, used us in our weakness to turn our hearts around to him. And now he uses those things that we were weak in, that we can be strong for other brothers in. Amen. And that's where we can serve, you know, serve them. Yep. I mean, we, we kind of see what, they, what, they go, what they're going through, what they went through. And we can put our arm around, you know, around them and say, hey, let's go this way let's go let's go have something to eat let's go have a cup of coffee you know just break down and talk to each other i mean because that's what we really need to do i don't know you're going this deep today brother. <laughs> well what joe you take me to Denny's. <laughs> right? We're going to have to Zoom Denny's for him. <laughs> well, you know, that uh, the little the little subliner of this group says real men talking about real topics, right? Amen. And when we, when we started this back in 2020, it, it, the first morning was just myself and James Ganey. And we were like, okay, well, this is not, not exactly what we had anticipated, but we started praying and then we had a brother join us from Uganda that morning. Yep. And now it's flourished into what we have here and, and being in there. But, you know, in those, in those earlier times, we were trying to understand who each other was and you know, get a feel for this new way we're going to do things here. I mean, you know, because that was 
COVID going on and we're Zooming to people and trying to build relationships. And I was really skeptical about how, how bonding it can be. But man, I tell you what, it has blown me out of the water as to how bonding it can be. It's absolutely. Amen. I mean, that's why I kind of, I kind of wish I had some of the brothers, you know, here locally, because then I can turn around, connect with them and then turn around, bring them into the Zoom. But I don't have that. Right. So, right, right now, I'm kind of like to myself, I reach out to Tim and I reach out to Jonathan like I did just recently. And other than that, I stay to myself. And I got the wife Plus, popping up. You don't communicate. It's hard to communicate. Well, not everybody's as open. Um, I mean, the guys that I meet with every day, they're open to certain things, but it's like with promise keepers, they they won't commit long enough to sit out. I, I don't know. I mean, we get together for an hour and a half, two hours every day, every weekday. I'm sorry. But as far as like I've given them handouts and sheets and different things and tried to, but there's no interest in that. And, and I don't understand why, but I, I'm praying about it. So. You know, guys, when I when I was originally in Promise Keepers 25 years ago, uh, all we had to do is go to a man and mention, would you like to, to know more about the Lord? And they'd say, oh, you're Promise Keeper, huh? Promise Keeper Ambassador. Yeah, well, we're open to that. We'd go to their <laughs> churches. We'd actually go as like four or five guys would go to somebody else's church and then meet their pastor and and be with them during services. And that would stir a lot of hearts. But this world is totally different. It's darker than I've ever seen it. You know, I'm, I'm 70 years old now and uh, I have no family left. All of my family has passed away, graduated into heaven. So, you know, we, we have to look at things differently nowadays, guys. Um, I feel like here I am in Michigan, surrounded by water. Largest freshwater lakes in all the world. And yet I'm in a desert because I can't seem to get these guys motivated to, to come to these things, to, to try and reach out to other people. They're all living as little islands, you know, and they're all in the desert and they don't have a lot of relationships. I, I see the guys from California. When I'm on, when I'm in Zoom calls with the guys from California, I say, well, gee, isn't that strange? Here's California out there. But they've got a lot of things going on. A lot of, a lot of men are coming to, to know Christ, and there's a lot of revival that looks like it's coming from there. But Michigan, I feel like it's a desert, guys. I know it's not, but I feel like a desert here because it's hard to motivate anybody, even my friends, even the guys that I, I go to church with. They're all too busy. They've all got relationships. They all got everything else going on in their life, and they don't want it to come you know, do extra outside of that. You know, they're all they're all caught up in their own life. Everyone forgets that we're just as much family as the brother and sister we were born with. If not, we're more family. Jesus Christ's blood runs through our veins. Everyone doesn't seem to understand that we're actual family. We're not just a bunch of people that you know. Praise God, brother. Amen. You guys are closer than my family because I can't interact with them. Mm. And my, my real brothers are the same way. We're on like two different worlds. And you know, that's one great thing about this. I know that the situation that I have been in and the situation that I am in, I am not alone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you can tell if James raised his hand or what it looked like he did a clapping emoji or something like that <laughs> <laughs> he must be what, listening to us and his <laughs> well he's probably trying to but it's really hard where he's at because they got all that the conference going on right I know what's been put on my heart here recently is about uh Texarkana, they were just hit with a couple tornadoes last night. Mm -hmm. And I know like Brother Bill, he's down there. 
and I'm trying to think, uh, Jason Williams and a couple other guys were down there and it's just like, wow, they're, you know, it's, it can be devastating. I've been trying to keep, uh, keep track of what's going on with them and keep them in prayers. Right. Amen, James. Brother Ramirez, <laughs> what do you have for us this morning? Good to see you. I don't know, maybe he's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have all you brothers on there. Uh, just always feel free to, to jump in anytime. Brothers, uh, we love you all. We thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I'm semi. <laughs> The only place I can get around to, it seems. <laughs> oh. You know, there's, there is one thing I would like to add in here that, um, for any of you guys that didn't see it. I, I would, uh, you know, challenge you to go watch those little video clips they had of the dads that uh, went into the school. Oh, yeah. Um, the man, that was, that's really powerful, you know. The school is about is basically about to shut down because they were having so much violence in the school, and the dads finally stepped up and said, "No, no, we're going to go to school, and we're going to be dads." And man, they've made such a tremendous difference in that. They've and, been doing that for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw it a couple months ago. Good. Yeah. Great. It's still going on. Yep. Uh, more ministries reaching out, doing the same type thing, and that's that's what we need. You know. We need to, to be those central figures. Uh, but anytime we get into this uh, change making and serving thing and it starts talking about, I mean, we talked about our pastors this morning, but we're also supposed to think about this as our government and our, you know, there's really a bad subject to talk about these days. Uh, but the, it always rolls around for me to Second Chronicles 7.14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. You know, that's God's promises. I don't know. There's 3,000 or more promises through the scriptures, verses that God gives us a promise with. And that's one of them. You know, but there's things that we have to we have to do so many people reach out to that verse that says, you know, resist the devil and he'll flee. Yeah. But you forgot about the first part that says submit to God. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at these scriptures, just remember that that's the first thing we have to do is to honor God. That was our first promise. Right. Um, so it starts us out in the right place. We got to honor God first. And if we honor God, then God will honor our wishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that's where the first three promises come into place. Shit. But there's where our foundation is, the first three promises. And then everything else just builds up on it, is like James said. And I, I just want to say, brother Tom, I think you have led an amazing Bible study this week. You did a great job, bro. I didn't try to go too deep, but at the same token, it's just like, here, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I think we jumped in. <laughs> I know next week we're going to be working on uh, unity, and I'll post that later on today. So that's going to be the next week's study. Um, and I know, like Tuesday, I've got election going on for president and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. About, I'm going to pray on that one, excuse me, um, before I go into the, the polls. I'm going to get on my knees and pray even more for it. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna leave the door, leave it open for anybody to go ahead and uh, pray us out. Dear Heavenly Father, we're here at your at your throne room each day, and we're asking for number one. We're coming in hum humility to ask you for forgiveness of our sins, dear Lord. We repent. And dear Heavenly Father, it means we have to turn away from our sins. That's, that's not an easy thing to do, but you provide us everything that we need. All your glory, your faith, 
your ability to help us to know what is good and what is bad and to follow what is good and to discard what is bad. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that our Lord has provided that to us, conscience, presence, the Holy Spirit that guides us in our, in our faith and our walk with the Lord, dear Lord. So we thank you for that. And we ask you that you will lift up our nation, lift up our people, lift up the people of the world, dear Lord, and help them to know you so that you can guide them also along the path of righteousness. We thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, each and every day, as each day is your day, dear Lord. Today is a new day, and we know that it's you that provides that to us. You provide everything that we have and everything that we do. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the men who've been on this prayer call, on this Zoom call. And we thank you for everything that they bring to the table because we know that they are mighty men of God. And we thank you for everything that you do. We pray this in Yeshua, Hamashiach's holy name. Amen. 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 God bless you, brothers. Have a good week, gentlemen. Love you all, guys. Bless. Love you, bless guys. You.